insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 31, Getting to Know You, part two. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So today we are finishing up a two-part series. We started last week. We are going through um, a series of questions that were developed by... Uh, clinical psychologist, Dr. Christy Wolf. And uh, this week we've got four different categories we're going to be going through. Okay. We have relationships, the future, family, and personal values. And we've got, I think, yeah, we've got about 36 questions this week. So a few less than last week. Okay. So any questions, input, or... Anecdotes you'd want to share before we get into it? Mm. Not so much, huh? Not really. Okay, then let's get right into it. So the first category that we're going to be going into is relationships. And um, the first question that we have here is, do your friends have boyfriends or girlfriends? Like, are any of your friends that you are you associate with now, are they in relationships? No, I don't think so. Now, is that, do you think that's unusual? Are there other kids in your, in your grade that are in relationships that you don't usually associate with? Um, I mean, I hear drama about it, but they've never, the relationships never lasted long that I know of. So they're little, little, you know forays into relationships and stuff. Yeah, but I, I, what I know of, my friends aren't dating. Okay. And to put things in a context, you know, you're almost 13. Your friends are generally your age or a year or two younger than you. So mm-hmm. it's still kind of early for the dating stuff. So some of these questions may not be um, entirely valid from our, our audience, but yeah. we'll go through them anyway. So question number two is, what do you think makes a healthy relationship? Well, if both, if um, the two um, people f- have fallen in love, I think honesty, trust, and compassion w- with both of them would make a good relationship. And I'm not going to say specific genders because I know in the f- I know now that. Um, we can, we can like whichever gender we want, and we can be whichever gender we want. Right. Now, I would add sort of a caveat to that, that at, at your age, you know, in your teen years, um, a lot of the relationships that, that kids your age run into are less about the falling in love stuff and more about trying to find who you are, what you like, who you like. So a lot of times some of the relationships that you get into are less about love and more about the kind of people you want to hang around with and things tend to develop from there. Yeah. Um, Later on in life when you're looking at getting married and settling down and maybe having kids uh, and you're looking for a long-term partner, then you start getting more into the falling in love type scenarios. Okay. Um, So just to put that in the perspective. So question two, and I already know the answer to this one, but I'll ask anyway. Do you have a girlfriend or boyfriend? Nope. No, you don't. And and I'm perfectly okay with that just for the record. Yeah, I know. 
Um, so we'll move on from there. What do you think are the qualities you would look for in someone you'd want to date? Now, we're not talking falling in love and getting married. We're just mm-hmm. talking about somebody that you'd want to date. Well, I'd like us. Um, I wouldn't like start off immediately. I would like look to be friends and basically what I see, you know, what I, everyone should probably know what I see in a friend. Those are basically the same qualities I would see in someone I was dating. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much. So what are some of those qualities? Like, give us some examples. Um, trust, honesty, the ones I said before. Um, also, um, just being a good friend, basically. Yeah, like you want something you can hang out with and talk to and have fun with. and Yeah, basically. And, and when you start dating, that's really what you're going to be looking at more than anything else. It's, you know, I'm going to be hanging out with this person. What activities do we enjoy? What movies do we like? What music do we listen to? What common interests do we have? Um, and that drives most of the relationship qualities that you look for at, at this age. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those evolve over time, though. So uh, that brings us to question five. Is there anyone, and you don't have to name names, but is there anyone that you have a crush on? Nope. No. Yes, do not shake your head, sweetheart. This is an audio <laughs> recording, too. So the, oh my. the listeners, listeners can't hear you shake your head. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> okay, so you don't, you do not have a crush on anyone right now. Nope. Okay, uh, the next question, and we'll expound on this one in a, in a future podcast that we're actually prepping right now is, do you know anyone who is LGBTQ? Yes, I do. Okay, and for the, for the audience's sake, we'll just say that, you know, LGBTQ is uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer in this case, um, but we will... Expound on that in what I hope will be greater, much greater detail uh, later in the month of September. Question seven. Does anyone, those that you know, you know, reflecting on the last question, does anyone treat them differently that you notice? Nope. They don't. Okay, that's good. Um, and I think the the impetus for this question here is because for the longest time, and things are starting to change now for the positive, which is good, but for the longest time, people that were not considered heterosexual were ostracized, they were not accepted. Um, Even now in certain circles, namely like the Catholic Church, they're very much looked down upon um, for reasons that are not valid, um, and often not fully understood. But again, we'll get into that stuff uh, in the the episode we're going to do later on. Mm -hmm. Um, How old do you think you have to be to fall in love? Well, um, maybe when you're, um, I think the time you should start dating would be around 16. At least that's what you tell me. Okay. The age I should. But if you want to fall in love, I'd recommend at least 20. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Sometimes, unfortunately, you you can't help when you fall in love. Yeah. Um, It's sort of one of those natural things that happens that you don't have much control over. Yeah. Uh, Like when mommy and I first met... You know, she might dispute this, but, you know, I kind of think it was love at first sight when the two of us met the first time, and it's it's been that way ever since. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you never know. You never know. Uh, What about getting married? How old do you think you should be to get married? Well, I'm pretty, well, I'd say at least 30. 30. Just like... If you want to get married, I'd recommend getting a good, one, a good household, two, have a steady relationship, and three, enough money to support yourself and possibly your lover. 
And I think that's brilliant. I think that's a very good idea. Uh, and I think a lot of uh, young couples uh, these days tend to get married very early. Um, and they're not established. You know, you've, they've not finished their schooling. Uh, they don't have stable jobs. And uh, probably the biggest strain I think you would ever see on relationships, especially marriages, tends to be finances. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if you wait until your you're late 20s, early 30s, you could probably get yourself set up in a way that you don't have those financial burdens that are on the relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's it for relationships. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the future. So, the future. We only have a few questions here, and that's mainly because I'm not clairvoyant and can't predict the future yet. <laughs> so, question nine, and these are sort of kind of fun questions. Question nine is, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? Um, I guess I'd go to um, Tokyo, Japan. So, you know, you've mentioned this in the past. What is your fascination with Tokyo? Well, I know it. I I just feel like it would be cool to go and see. I know there are some might be some historical things that I could learn about it. I also learned about it in social studies last year. <clears throat> okay. And um, plus there's Tokyo Disneyland. Yes, there is. We can't get away from Disney. Nope. Now your artwork that you do, the style that you tend to draw in, is very reminiscent of japanese anime it's sort of like an offshoot of that yeah. is it is that part of the draw the culture of of tokyo and the artwork there i mean i do like the artwork and i would be interested to see um if there was someone who was able to draw anime because honestly i like anime it's just i haven't really been able to draw anime as well as they do because my anime is more in a cute style their anime is somewhat more realistic okay okay but but that is part of the draw of wanting to go there though yeah cool uh number 10 this is a big question that a lot of people really just can't answer at certain stages in their life but what is your goal in life Hmm. I guess to finish school with a good education, eventually go to a good college, afterwards get a job in either technology or engineering, and um, maybe if um, if I ever if this ever happens, settle down with someone. Okay, and I think they're all very realistic and obtainable goals, and. And they're smart goals, too, and I think that's the important thing. You don't have this, and there's nothing wrong with these ambitious goals of I want to be an actress or I want to be a professional football player or something. Mm -hmm. People still have to have those goals, but obtaining those is, is much more difficult than obtaining what your goals are. Your goals kind of line up in a linear format, which is uh, makes it easier to obtain those. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you hope your life will be like 10 years from now? Well, um, if we're thinking about it logistically, I'd be, I'd be 22. I'd have graduated from high school and I would maybe still be in college. I have no idea how the logistics work. I might well, like... Depends on if you're going for a higher level degree, you would be, yeah. Yeah, if I, I might go for the higher level degree. I might... And I might have like gotten a job to help um, to help pay for college funds and stuff. Um, yeah, because mommy and daddy are going to put that burden entirely on you. You're paying oh for my, all of it. Oh my god! <laughs> Just to help with it, and um, I mean, I might actually be finished in college in ten years. I have no idea. You might be, and that would be right around the time that you would be finishing it too. Yeah, so I'd be about to finish college and. Hopefully find a job in hopefully find a job in engineering or um, technology. What kind of job would you would you want? What's your ideal job? I honestly 
don't really know. I mean, you and mommy work in engineering and technology or s- I think. Well, mommy works more in logistics. I work yeah. in technology. Yeah. But like, is your ambition to like, I don't know, work for NASA or, or build I, bridges or something like that? I mean, if I was able to work for NASA, I would because... It's just I'm, cool. And I'm sort of a science nerd. Yeah. yeah. Um, but well, like, is that what you, you're looking to do? Is it that is it that type of engineering? I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, you also talked about how my my uh, love of art could go in with some some engineering by like designing buildings. Yeah, you could you could you could put the two of those together and become a, an architect. Yeah, I think that would work too. Cool. Yeah, I still have no real goal on which job I will get, but I'm still looking for something in either engineering or technology. And you know what? At this stage, there it's impossible to really set your sights on one specific role. Yeah. I think the idea of achieving the general skills right now needed to go into technology and engineering is enough to direct you where you need to go right now. And as you progress through high school, you'll fine-tune that a little bit more. Okay. Uh, here's a whimsical question for you. Uh, if you had $1,000 to spend, how would you spend it today? It's not much of a future question, but how would you spend it today? Well, I'd help pay off rent from the house. Really? With $1,000? We don't rent. We own the house, by the way, so oh, it's a sorry. mortgage. <laughs> The mortgage. I'd right. help with the mortgage. If I had any money left over, it's I'd... It's a thousand dollars. There's not that much. Yeah. So how would you spend it on you? I appreciate your, your generosity, but we got the uh, we got the mortgage covered. I'd help pay college funds. You're not in college yet. Don't you save... Don't you save for college, though? No. No. We, we do everything on the fly. <laughs> Now, for yourself, if you could spend a thousand dollars today on yourself, how would you spend it? Um, I'd probably it's only a thousand bucks. I know, and um you're just not a big spender, is that it? Yeah, you know I'm sort of I'm. Not that. Well, you're not cheap. You're frugal. Frugal. I'm frugal. Yeah. You know I'm frugal. Right. But if you, if there was one thing in the world that you would want to spend that you could get for a thousand dollars or less, what would it be? A ginger cat. A ginger cat. Okay. Interesting. Uh, and the last question, or series of questions, depending on how you answer the first one, is: Would you ever get a tattoo? I mean, if it was to honor something or someone, I would. But on the fly right now, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm not big. Like, like I don't have a problem with tattoos or people that have tattoos. Yeah, neither do I. Just, I don't, I, it doesn't appeal to me to turn my body into a canvas like that. Mm-hmm. So, but more power to those who can take the pain of the needle, so. Okay, well, I guess that shuts down the follow-up questions to that, then. Thank you so much. Yeah. And that'll close out this category of the future. When we come back, we'll talk about family. I get to pat myself on the back a lot on that one. (laughs) So, who do you like most, me or mom? No, that's not really actually a question. (laughs) Oh, my God, Daddy. I know that's not a question because we went over them. Um, what do you like most about me? And I'll bounce these back and forth through between mommy and I. Um, I like the fact of you're interested in history and the fact that you'll help me, um, whenever I have trouble in anything, even though math is hard. Math is hard. (laughs) I also like the fact that you're compassionate and will listen to me whenever I have problems. Or whenever you monologue. Or whenever, I anxi- or whenever I have anxiety. Or that too. Okay. Good answers. Um, oh, this one I'll, I'll, I'll ask about mommy. What would you change about mommy? Um, 
She's going to get mad that I painted her in a corner on that one. <laughs> uh, let's see. I am... She's a compassionate mom. She's so listen to me with my problems. I, I'm not asking you to toot her horn there. I what know, would you change? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Um, I would change the way she reacts to this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I would. If I had to change something, I would change the fact that she just always pokes a stick in my cage. Oh uh, well, both of us do that. Yeah, I would change the way. I would want you guys to stop poking sticks in my cage. Fair but you, enough. But you kind of do it a little funnier. Oh, well, I try. I try. Just don't tell mommy that. Oh, uh, well, because she won't listen to this podcast, right? Yeah, let's just hope. Yeah, <laughs> don't say anything on here that you want mommy, you don't want mommy to hear. Yeah. Um. So let's turn the question back around a little bit here. And let me ask, what do you like, what do you think I like most about you? The fact that I'm intelligent and I'm a and that I'm a good artist. Yeah, they they are very good things to like about you. And what do you think I would change about you? The fact that I that I hardly make any friends and. Well, yeah, that would be that would be a good thing to change. Yeah, and the fact of my athleticism. Nah, I really don't care too much about that. Yeah, I didn't really think you would. Yeah, now I, I'd like you to be able to make friends a little bit easier. I think it would make your life a little easier. And you'd like me to stop worrying about middle school. Yes, well, I'd like you to stop worrying about things in general. You tend to... Uh, Overreact. Yeah, you swamp yourself in anxiety when it's one of these things where you really just sort of... You kind of have to take things in stride. Mm -hmm. So take things seriously, but you know, don't don't get yourself upset over them. Question: uh, What are we? Eighteen. What is something you wish I would do more often? Um. Well, actually, let's change that so we don't do all the negative ones on mommy. What is something you wish mommy would do more often? Um. Let's see. Something I want mommy to do more often. Uh, I'd like her to, oh my God. I would like her to, oh my God. You'd like her to, oh my God? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, uh, oh my God. Why is this so hard? I, I don't know. It was it seemed pretty straightforward when we went through the list earlier. I know. Um. You're killing me. Just pick oh something. Oh, my God. Uh, I guess so. Okay. Maybe we'll just... watch, maybe, like, have more fun activities with me. Okay. That's a that's a good cop. I like that one. There. What would you like me to do less often? Um, Make dad jokes. <laughs> you want fewer dad jokes. At least make them funny. Well, they're, they are funny to me. It's all about perspective. Uh, okay. Cape Cod was funny. It's not my fault you didn't know where Cape Cod was. Oh, my God. Look, um, it's not my fault that I don't know either. Neither of you two tend to tend Right. To we didn't We didn't educate you about Cape Cod. I'm yeah. terribly sorry. <laughs> we'll start doing geography lessons next week. <laughs> Question 20. Do you feel comfortable talking to me about anything? Yep. Anything? Yep. Literally anything? Pretty much. Okay, good. That was an easy question. Question 21. What could I do to make you feel more comfortable? I think you pretty much nailed, nailed the head. Na I nailed, na nailed the head on that one? Yeah, you nailed the head. <laughs> hit the nail on the head? Hit the nail on the head on that one. Oh, does that make any sense? It, that does, yeah. Hitting the head on the nail doesn't, because that takes a lot of talent. Um, so what do you mean by that, though? Like, I think you guys made it made me pretty comfortable already talking about everything. You have a good system where you at like I have to base the day off of a word. Sometimes I say tolerable. Sometimes I say awful. Sometimes I say pretty good. That kind of stuff. So we sort of make you rate the day. Pretty much. And then we talk, if it's a bad rating, then we talk about why it's a bad rating. Yep. 
Okay. If it's a good rating, sometimes you want to hear why it was a good rating. I'll buy that. That kind of makes sense. Uh, question 22. How do you think your friend's family relationships compare to ours? Do they have similar relationships? Do they talk? Do they do the same types of things? Well, I don't know if... Th I think I'm gonna... I don't know if they talk about their problems. It's not my business. It's their personal life. Sure. But I do think they have somewhat of a strong relationship with their parents. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, do you think they are closer or more distant than we are as a family? Um, I mean, I definitely think um, my friends have good relationships with their parents. I wouldn't... Um, I mean, they might be like a tiny bit more distant than us because I, I don't really know. I just feel like somehow there's small, a small amount more distant than. Well, because they family. don't do you know podcasts where they do <laughs> penetrating questions and answer sessions. Wow, Daddy. I'm just saying, you know, how many of your how many of your friends do podcasts? None. None. See, that's how cool we are. Mm-hmm. I, I did want to ask a follow-up question on here. Do are any of your kids in a single parent household? Any of your friends in a single parent household? Uh not that I know of. Okay. I think they're all in um two parent households. Okay. Some of siblings. Cause I can understand how how that can certainly have an effect on the relationship. On kids. Yeah, yeah. So uh, question 23, is there anything you wish our family would do together more often? Go to Dave and Buster's. Go to Dave. That's expensive, man. You need, you want to go to Dave and Buster's, you need to start footing the bill for it. Oh, jeez. Um, but okay, I can see that. We do have a lot of fun there. Yep. Uh, question 24, do you think the discipline in our family is fair? Yes, I do. Is there anything that you would change about it? Um, I don't think so. You both have a good way to discipline me. Like, So the beatings will continue until morale improves? Oh, my God. <laughs> you do not hit me. You've no, we don't. You've never hit me before. Exactly. I mean, you might have hit me with, like, a stuffed animal or something, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you got to use the soft stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we're not overly strict with you then. Nope. What uh, describe what some of the discipline is that we use for you? Like whenever I make a mistake, you guys talk about it with me. We talk o over about the mistake, and eventually I learn my lesson and not do it again. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, <sighs> the discipline is determined by the recipient. So if you do something wrong, and we implement you know, a passive discipline with just a talk or something and the problem doesn't resurface, then there's no need to take that discipline any further at that point in time. And fortunately, you know, the talks that we have with you are very effective and you're very receptive. And um, plus the fact I always worry that I'm going to make the same mistake again and the fact that I really don't want to make the same mistake again and just my anxiety gets the best of me. Yeah, and what happens is, is you tend to be far harder on yourself in those situations than mommy or daddy are. Uh, so it saves us from, from really having to crack down. We just sort of kind of have to point out some of the mistakes to you and nudge you in the right direction, and you, you take the guidance and go. So uh, as parents, mommy and daddy are very fortunate, you know, that you're that receptive. Mm -hmm. And that is all we have for family. We will come back and finish up with values. So earlier on in the year, we did an entire episode, entire podcast on uh, spring uh, holidays, religious holidays. So this question sort of springboards on that. So question 25 is, do you believe in God? Um... I guess so. And why is that? Um, I'm pretty sure everyone believes in some type of God. and Except atheists. Atheists don't believe in God. Yeah. Um, 
But I'm not that religious, right. is to say. Okay. So if you do believe in God, as you say you do, how do you picture God? Well, I guess. What do you think he or she looks like? I think it. I think he would look like, he'd have, for some reason I've been imaging this for a while, he might have a white robe. Um, okay. He'd have a beard similar to yours. And okay. he would have like a poofy white haircut. So the the, the typical Zeus like god with a beard, white hair, and wearing a toga and stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. Very traditional image of it, and one that's ironically enough passed down to us from non Christian or non monotheistic uh, creation stories. Mm hmm. You know, they go all the way back to the Greek gods. You know, that's how they pictured Zeus and and the other gods like that. So mm -hmm. that's kind of interesting. Um, what do you think happens after death? Um, I don't like to theorize it on occasions but i guess now i kind of have to i guess after death you might like it would be like falling asleep and then eventually you'd like if we're looking at it realistically it's like a forever lasting sleep or if you want to theorize on it maybe you wake up and you're eventually in heaven seeing all seeing all of your relatives who have passed away so you do have a belief in an afterlife then? Somewhat. Okay. Um, and that's fine. I mean, we don't need to go into any more detail than that. Yeah, please. No, it's going to make me feel weird. Um, do you think there is one best religion? Like, All right, so let's let's step back a second here and, and think. You've got Western religion and then you've got Eastern religion. And you've probably not had much exposure to any Eastern religions like uh, Hindu, Buddhism, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but from a Western religion standpoint, we celebrate Jewish holidays. We celebrate some Christian holidays. Uh, but the other major religion in the West is Islam. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've had minimal experience or minimal exposure to that. Yeah, but I did learn about it in social studies along with Buddhism and all the other religions. Okay, good. So as being as well-rounded as you are, do you think there is one religion that's better than another? Understanding that Christianity, Judaism, and Islam really stem from the same origins, the same belief systems. Yeah, I know. So do you think one is better than another? No. And why is that? I just feel as though if you think, if you know what religion you want to be, I just say, like, you're allowed to believe in what you believe in, if, in what you want to believe in. You shouldn't be forced to do one because the ruler thinks it's a better religion than any of the others. You should have the choice of your own religion and you shouldn't have someone else controlling it for you. I don't think any religion is better than another because, I mean, three of the main religions were all started um, from one. Right. So let me expound on that just for a minute and ask, what do you think people should look for or do look for when they're looking for a religious experience or a belief system? Well, I honestly don't have too much exposure with... I have never really had to choose my religion. I would just say, like, look for something you believe in and look for the religion that suits you best, I guess. Okay. That works. So question 29 is really a mystery question of the universe. Now, if you are a fan of the... Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The answer to this is 47, but I'm curious what your answer is. What do you think is the meaning of life? Um, That's a big question. Yeah, it's a really big one. Like the meaning of... So the meaning of life. Um, I'd say there is no real meaning. There's many things you can do in your life, and 
you can choose what you want to do as long well yeah so like there's no real answer to the question because the me- you control the meaning of your life you get to choose what you want to do choose what you want to like choose when you want to dislike choose what food you like choose what food you dislike choose your job choose like your choose like what college or school you want to go to and choose if you want to help the world or potentially be a threat in it you can choose what you want to do the meaning of life is all dependent on you you don't let anyone else decide your life for you basically you live your life the meaning of life is living it you can basically just do whatever you really want to do and choose what you like and dislike you don't have to base it off of anything the meaning of life you don't really have to like there's no real answer the answers are just infinite wow i have to tell you that's a hell of an answer that is an answer that i think is far more mature than your age suggests and i have to commend you for that thank you um i'm impressed moving on um do you think adults automatically deserve respect depends on what they've done okay let's say you just met someone on the street or you just you're okay you're going into school to to start a new school you meet your first teacher don't know anything about them don't know their name nothing do you think they deserve respect Oh well, yes, because one, they're providing you with hopefully a good education, and two, they're actually willing to do it. So you think based on your interaction and the role that they serve in your life would determine if they deserve respect? Well, as long as they don't, they haven't committed anything, any crimes. So let me give you another for instance. So we go over to Dave and Buster's in Philadelphia on a regular basis. And one of the paths that we take getting there takes us on this little transition to 95, uh, I-95 North to get there. And in that transition period, when we go from the bridge to the highway, there's oftentimes homeless folks there that are panhandling to try to get money. Do you think they deserve respect? Well, yes, they're actually trying to survive. Like, if they're trying to, like, get money, it means they're trying to, like, find a way to live because if they're homeless and have no money, if they don't get money, then probably more than likely going to die. Okay. So let me ask you another, for instance, we go to Walmart to shop for groceries. Okay. And we go to check out, and the cashier's checking you out. Do you think the cashier deserves respect? Well, I mean, let's, I know there's like, so take for instance my brother. Um, he has, he works at Walmart even though, even though he's still in college. He only, he needs to get the extra money. I think the cashier should deserve some respect because he's trying to get the money so he can provide for his family because you've got to think about other people's lives as well. If you want to think of someone who deserves respect, like I think the dude should deserve respect because even if he's just like some teenager trying to get a job or something, he should still deserve respect so he can because he wants to provide money and help either his family or him to have a better life. So it sounds like, like in that. general, adults deserve respect unless they've mm-hmm. committed crimes. Yes. Okay. I think that's probably a, a fairly realistic moral compass to go by there. Mm-hmm. Now, let me switch the question up and say, do kids deserve respect? Um, like I said... Certain kids. Okay. I definitely think kids who aren't spoiled brats should be, should deserve respect. Okay. Kids who are spoiled brats, 
not really sure they should. I'm not really sure they deserve respect. And you know what? To a certain extent, I largely agree to what you're saying. Um, the way that I've conducted myself in life is that everyone deserves a certain level of respect just mm -hmm. out of human decency. Yeah. Okay. And respect is like currency. It's like money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you're given a certain allowance. And depending on what your actions are dictates how you spend or earn respect. So, for instance, everyone gets $10 in respect. Mm -hmm. And if you do things that are positive and uplifting and for the greater good, then you can earn more, more of that respect. You can earn more money there. Yeah. So you have the opportunity for me to respect you more. But if you do things like lie, cheat, and steal, you you spend that respect and you squander what respect you do have. Yeah. And your respect value diminishes. That's kind of how I look at things. Yeah, I I definitely agree with your system. Okay. Like everyone has equal respect from the start. If you do positive things, you get more respect. If you do negative things, you get less respect. So that that's a very good lead into the next question. So question 31 is, how do you earn respect? How does someone earn your respect? Well, if like, like as long as they don't do anything completely horrible, like the things you said, lie, cheat, steal, stuff like that. And if they show positive feedback, like friendliness, honesty, trust, then I would say they earned more respect. I think that's a very good outlook. Question 32 is another big one. If you could, how would you change the world? Um, I would try to my best to make peace on the world. I hate the fact that we're all still fighting for like just reasons and I just want it to stop. I just hate the thought I hate the thought of war. And I don't want any more outbreaks like that. Because not only does it not help the soldiers fighting in the war, but I'm pretty sure if there are any pedestrians near there or people near there, it would greatly impact their lives as well. Because, sure, like, we were in this one time when we were doing um, ELA and we were, learn we were actually reading a story about um, a girl... ELA being the English language arts classes. Yes. And basically, there was this little girl who was writing a diary similar to Anne Frank. Um, she was basically writing it because she was, in in her childhood, there was war going on in her home, uh, in her, where she lived, and it was hard for her to live as, during war. Like, it was basically... It basically took away her childhood. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I appreciate that perspective. Uh, question 32 is, uh, sorry, 33 is, do you think it's ever okay to lie? Mm, on certain occasions. Give me an example. Like, if someone worked really hard on something, they asked you if you like it, but you don't, but you don't want to hurt their feelings. I would definitely say then you can lie because um, it lifts their spirits. And I definitely think even though you're lying, it's not, it's like a little white lie. It, I know you should be honest, but if they worked really hard on it and they're really proud of it and they really want support, then I would definitely say just a little white lie. So a little white lie is like, you know, does this shirt make me look fat? And you say no. Yeah. It's your fat that makes you look fat. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> I get the point. I know what you're saying. Uh, question number 34. Who do you look up to? Um, you and mommy. That's only because I'm six foot four. <clears throat> Why do you look up to us? Well, you're both good role models. You both, you have both worked hard, you both um, 
worked hard to get where you are in life now. You both have good jobs, and you both provide a good and healthy life, and a, a good and healthy life for me. Okay. And yes, for the record, I am fishing for compliments at this point. <laughs> uh, let's see. 35. Who do you think looks up to you? Mm, I, sim- I say some of my friends who um, are younger than I am. Okay. And why do you think they look up to you? Um, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but... Hey, why not? I- I've been fishing for compliments this whole time. I could be considered a good role model. Okay. I think you could, too. And I think part of it's the fact that you're older. But I think a large part of it is because you exhibit the qualities of leadership and role model that a lot of kids look up to. And and you have good judgment. And I think that's very important. Question 36, and the last question for this category and today. Uh, What do you think are the three most important traits a person could have? Um, I'd go with kindness, honesty, and some respect for others. Some retrospect or some respect? (laughs) Respect. Respect. So kindness... What was the third one, second one? Honesty. Honesty. And respect towards others. And respect towards others. Fortunately, good memory was not in there because I couldn't remember that list to begin with. <laughs> yeah, um, I honestly don't mind if people don't have good memory. <laughs> <laughs> good, because I don't. Neither um, do I. So they are, they are three very good qualities, and I think they, they are um, – Good touch points on whether or not you a person's a good person or not. Mm-hmm. So that's it for the questions. We will come back. We will get your final thoughts and any shout outs that you might have. So go for closing remarks and shout outs. Alrighty. So I guess I'll talk. Since we were talking about family today, I'll briefly go about family. I definitely say, think you should be, people should be close to the ones they care about. And um, you should always remember that no matter how bad your family might be, they're still trying to look out for you. I know it's not the case for every family, but for most families and Please don't end up being a bad person. Don't end up lying, cheating, or stealing. Please try your best to be a good person. And if you are, it'll come in your favor to have a good life later on. Okay. Any shout-outs today? Um, I guess I'll give a shout-out to you and Mommy for being such good parents and also to you for organizing the podcast for us because I definitely think it helped me mature more than I did before we did the podcast. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I think that is it for today. Um, And we'll be back next week with uh, another great podcast. Bye, everyone. Bye.